Welcome to Deep Lore, the podcast that dives into the most mysterious and perplexing cases from around the world. I'm your host, Matt Jarbo, and today we're going to be taking a deep look into the chilling disappearance of Patricia Patty Adkins. Vanished in the early hours of June 30th, 2001, Patty's case has become one of Ohio's most confounding unsolved mysteries. With a secret affair, a planned vacation shrouded in mystery, and an enigmatic lover who remains tight-lipped to this day. The story will take you on a journey through the shadowy corners of betrayal, deception, and unanswered questions. So buckle up and join us as we explore the twists and turns of Patty Adkins' puzzling disappearance on this episode of Deep Lore. Welcome back to the show, everybody. My name is Matt Jarbo. Thank you very much for joining me today. This, of course, is going to be a bit of a departure from what I've been trying to do on the podcast uh, to kind of clarify why things are changing format wise a bit more. It has a lot to do with um, I, I like to give my takes on these things. And I feel that what I was doing the three weeks of multiple stories per episode of not really offering up any of my own opinions and just kind of letting it be those little five minute shorts is fine. But at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of being disingenuous to myself because I am a very uh, you could argue like a, a curious person. I like to speculate. I like to kind of dive in. I like to understand. And I feel that my attraction, if you will, to true crime gets kind of sidelined when I treat it like that. I was kind of creating content more for like the pseudo TikTok crowd, which, you know what? That's not podcasting. That's TikTok. And that's my fault. My bad. So I thought I would just go back to what I was doing, which is talking about, you know, a single case each episode and going into as much information uh, as I can find. And giving my take on it while making sure that it is concise, condensed, and doesn't really involve like 45 extra minutes of, you know, unnecessary banter. And if you guys know, you know. But that being said, uh, I do welcome everybody to listen. I thank you very much for listening. If you're listening to this on YouTube, on iTunes, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, etc. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate that. And of course, the support and the suggestions are always great too. You guys can always find me. On Instagram at Deep Lord uh, TV, on TikTok at Deep Lord TV, and of course YouTube at uh, Deep Lord TV, and then Deep Lord TV is the website. So yeah, ha ha ha, there we go on that one. But today I want to talk about this particular case that is so fascinating to me in regards to all the circumstantial information that is around this case that you figure it would be easy to kind of pinpoint who the culprit is. But after all these years, still, there's been nothing, you know, no body, no crime, so to speak. And of course, is the disappearance and likely murder of Patty Adkins. So if you don't know this particular story, let's start with the last sighting of Patty. Now, Patty was a 29-year-old single mother to a seven-year-old daughter who worked at a Honda plant in the Honda of America automotive plant in Marysville, Ohio. She had been there for 10 years. She had risen to the role of a supervisor on the assembly line, and she was anticipating a promotion. So good for her on that. You know, she worked hard. She was going to get rewarded. But of course, things didn't work out as well as she would have hoped, because the last time anybody saw her was at 1219 a.m. on June 30th, 2001. Now, this wasn't, by the way, any kind of unfamiliar thing. You see, the Honda plant was going to shut down for the week. They had shut down every week for the 4th of July. They were giving all of their employees a week off, something that feels vastly unheard of in today's today's environment, but good on Honda for doing this. And so during this week-long period, Patty had arranged for her daughter to stay half with her ex-husband, half with her sister, while she went out of the country to Canada with her mysterious boyfriend. Now, to most people, they didn't know who the boyfriend was. They didn't know who the boyfriend was at all, but as we've come to find out, her boyfriend was a man that she worked with, a man who was married, and a man who Patty was apparently deeply, head over heels, infatuated with. And that's why the story is as peculiar as it is, because the last time she was seen was exiting the plant, carrying only a small blue duffel bag and she's never been seen again now this week-long vacation 
the one that she had told her sister about, was, like I said, to go to Canada with this male coworker with whom she was having an affair. And this male coworker at this point has not been publicly named by the police. I do believe his name is out there, but I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to point the finger at the wrong dude. And I don't want to get information wrong if, if I can, you know, help it essentially. So we're just going to refer to him as the boyfriend. Now she'd been in with this guy for a while. She had been engaged in this affair. She had told her loved ones and acquaintances about this relationship, mentioning that this man planned to leave his wife to be with her. Now, I don't know about you. I've read enough of these cases over the years that whenever, whenever I hear that, you know, I'm going to leave my wife for you, Barbara. I, I always think to myself, yeah, something bad's going to happen. All right. Because largely it's like not going to happen. And I don't want to put any blame on Patty here. Your love is an aphrodisiac. It makes you do stupid things. I think we all have a story out there of being, you know, head over heels infatuated with somebody who was probably toxic for us and then doing something stupid to please them and ultimately getting burned. Not as bad as this situation, obviously, but I think, I think we all kind of know that to an extent. We've all been in those situations. Lord knows. Lord knows I have. All right. So I kind of get it. And I don't want to put any blame on Patty because she's sadly no longer around to kind of defend herself from any of those accusations. But this was like coming off of a, a bad marriage. And she obviously felt this, you know, some kind of way about this guy. And, you know, he was doing all the things that those kind of con artists do, do right? They, they love bomb you, you know, Hey baby, I love you. I mean, yeah, I'm going to leave my wife. You know, I just need to get out of this relationship. I just need to like, you know, get away from this toxic place. I just need to do this and do that. And in this particular case, as we come to find out, and I'm just going to lead with this info and not hold on to it till later, she had been giving him money. She had given him roughly $90,000 during their relationship. I mean, we're talking like pulled from her 401k, depleted her life savings. She gave him this money so he could buy his freedom, if you will, from his, from his wife. That's what he was telling her. He was like, look, I need money. I need to buy my way out of this business that they jointly owned while he still worked at the Honda plant. And then also to kind of take care of this divorce. Like, I need cash. And this is 90000 in like 2001 money. You know, pre 9 11, I think the dollar went a little bit further. So this guy was like really milking her for whatever he could. And I, I think deep down, he was like, you know, what you get 90 grand off of, off of a mark, you know, you, you just keep pumping that well. But of course, what happens when it comes time to put up or shut up? And in this particular case, it was, hey, let's go to Canada for a week and let's go to a, a remote cabin where there's no cell service where there's no way of contacting anybody and, and we're just going to have ourselves a nice relaxing time. By the way, don't bring any clothing because I'm going to buy all of it for you when we get there. Which is, I mean, again, red flag, red flag, red flag. But when you trust somebody, I mean, when you truly implicitly trust somebody, when you love that person, when you are infatuated with that person, when you have a financial investment into that person, when you are that deep in it, you're not going to be looking at the bigger picture. You're not going to be looking at the abstract. You're going to be very much heavily focused on how you feel in that moment and the way that that person makes you feel. And that is always like the worst combination for a lot of stuff. Now, again, right before all this went down, Patty had arranged for the sister to take to look after her daughter also with her husband. She had then gone and placed her pets in a kennel. So the pets would be looked after, which is always a good thing. And like I said, her boyfriend comes to her and he says, hey, Patty, we're going to go out of town. We're going to go to Canada, the great white north. We're going to go to a small remote cabin without phone service and that don't pack anything because we're just going to take care of all of that when we get there, right? I'm going to buy you whatever you want with the 90,000 you gave me. Again, this woman's in love. This woman's in love. Infatuated. It's, it's such an addicting 
aphrodisiac. That honeymoon period in these scenarios are always like the worst thing to read about, in my opinion. Because if you've been in a relationship, and a lot of us have, you know the honeymoon phase. It's, and I don't just mean that like, you know, like, like a romantic endeavor. I mean like any relationship, right? You meet your new best friend. You're like, instant connection. I just want to be with you all the time. You know, it's that honeymoon phase of being in a new relationship. And that thing, when you come off of a bad relationship and you, and you kind of go right into this new one, and it's like your whole life turns upside down, and it kind of plays out like the opening of like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air song, you kind of realize that you just, you just get lost in it. You know, you just get lost in it. And I've had, trust me, I've had one experience when I was like 22, I dated a stripper for a summer and I had, I had family shit going on at the time that was bad. And I'm just like, I met this girl and I just kind of like, whatever, whatever. Right. And as a result of that, it was a very toxic thing. It was a very bad time overall but I didn't see any of it because the way she made me feel the way she made me feel was like that. And when she used me up and spit me out, it hurt, it hurt real bad. But again, you know, like this is not that scenario. She just was using me for a couple things. Right. But in this particular case, this guy had, had, had taken this woman for $90,000. And, you know, now came this moment where he basically was like, let's isolate you for a week. And no one's going to see you again. It's almost like the perfect crime. I mean, it's been over 20 years and there's been no arrests. There's been suspicions, but no arrests. So here's what we know. On the night of the disappearance, Patty had her friend drive her to work so she could then sneak out and go over to the boyfriend's truck where he had just installed a camper shell, right? Or a cover, slide it into the back unseen by anybody else, completely undetected, close the bed of the truck, and then wait for him to get in the car with his coworker that he was carpooling with, take the car, take the coworker home, and then from there, head off out into, you know, the great white north, the unknown, the week-long vacation, everything else. But that's not what happened. She never showed up again. No one ever saw her again. And so this was on June 30th and she was supposed to pick up her kid a week later. And when that didn't happen, her sister decided to contact the boyfriend. So she called his house and first got his wife and the wife was all like, he's not here. And then she called back a little bit later and got a hold of the boyfriend and confronted him. Like, what did you do to my sister? And he of course was denying everything because that's what people like him do. So then, of course, you know, the sister contacted the authorities to report her sister missing. It's now been a week, you know, well past that 48 hour period. And it's just completely unlike Patty to do because, you know, she is a very devoted mother to her daughter, as I think most mothers are. So it's, it'd be like, you know, if my girlfriend didn't come home for a week, she's devoted to our kids. Absolutely. I'd be like, there's a problem. I'd be, I mean, I'd say that well before a week. You know, unless it was a planned vacation. But even then, you know, you got to have your suspicions, right? You got to kind of wonder. Things here don't seem normal anymore. So when the authorities went to question the boyfriend, he denied everything. He denied having an affair. He denied any plans to take a vacation. Uh, he denied even knowing her outside of just being a acquaintance at work. What? No, we work together. I don't know her. I don't have anything to do with her. I don't know. It's Pat. What is she? She works at the Honda plant. Oh, I've seen her. Yeah, she's whatever. We say hi nonchalantly. We don't bone in the broom closet, but we say hi nonchalantly. You know, and of course, what he says is that on the night of June 30th, when they left the plant, he and his friend drove 30 miles towards their home in Canton, Ohio. And they stopped at a Burger King restaurant, which apparently was really busy. The Burger King restaurant was like 45 minute wait to get Burger King in what appears to be like the middle of the night. And even like Burger King, I mean, come on, there's no fast food restaurant in Ohio that's going to have a 45 minute wait that anyone's going to wait at, you know, at that point in time. So that's a little bit suspicious. But then he, you know, went home, right? Dropped off the guy, went home and his wife then corroborated the story 
that he was home a couple minutes after he said he dropped off the friend. In order to help kind of establish his alibi and establish his innocence, the boyfriend then granted police permission to search the property. And it was here that the authorities did discover the new truck bed cover in the garage, which was purchased on June 26, just four days before Patty was to be concealed within it for the uh, drive to drop this guy off. Now, he said that he used the cover to store fishing gear in the bed of his truck and that he had driven his truck to work on the night Patty disappeared. Police decided to look inside the bed of the truck. They found cat hair that they were able to then match with Patty's cats. And they found a little bit of blood, like a, like a small spot of blood that looked like it could have come from like a squashed mosquito. But the sample was too small to test for DNA. Now, I don't know at this point if our current DNA standards or the ability to test would actually be able to, to come off of something so small. I do think that eventually that might be the case. But again, that's all they were able to find, and that's circumstantial, but it is not enough to, to remotely get a conviction. Never mind the fact that they also took cadaver dogs out to the property, never found anything. There was apparently a concrete slab that was uh, poured on the property during that vacation week. And again, they didn't find anything. So whether or not Patty's body is located on this guy's property, the cadaver dogs were unable to identify that. And I would argue probably not. You know, it seems like it seems like that might be the one thing that the, you don't want to do is bury the bones on your property, especially if you're going to be the prime suspect. Because if you're smart enough to con a woman out of 90 grand and you're smart enough to play in this clandestine vacation and you're smart enough to convince her to not tell anybody, you're probably going to be smart enough to like not dispose of the corpse on the property. I mean, I just feel like if you're going to go through all of that stuff, you're going to have enough foresight to go. Yeah. I mean, clearly probably not the case. Now, according to the wife during this particular week the only real time he was gone is he went fishing with some friends one day towards the end of the week and that was really about it but again it's almost like the wife was in on it if you want my honest opinion because while they searched his residence and again he's denying everything he's denying any connection any affiliation any romance anything they actually found items that Patty had told people she had given him. Like a Hard Rock, hard rock Cafe t-shirt. You know, and it's like this completely contradicts the story that he's out there telling people. Right? I don't know. Or I don't know nothing about her. Well, then why do you got this Hard Rock, t hard rock Cafe t-shirt that she says she gave you? Uh, What about the 90 grand for this sort of thing? Now, I don't know if they have any financial records for that. You know, this is what the... What the reports have been saying is this 90 grand. But again, if she's pulling out the money and she's giving it to him, I mean, there's nothing anyone can do about that. Now, apparently the boyfriend was then asked to take a polygraph of which he failed. But again, polygraphs are not admissible in court because it's not an exact science, you know. Uh, and then soon after he quit the Honda plant and... There's that. He just kind of up and left. Now, again, it's been over 20 years. No idea what's going on with this guy. Obviously, this case keeps getting brought up just recently. I think in 2022, there was a new report that came out that said that they're offering up a $25,000 reward for any information, um, which is a, a, you know, that might be enough to jog some people's memories. You know, that might be enough to do that. But as for Patty herself, five years after she disappeared, she was declared illegally dead in 2006. There have been zero 
activity on her financial records uh, or account since then. And both the authorities and her families feel that she is a victim of homicide. And as of right now in 2023, her case is unsolved. These ones are always interesting to read because it feels like all the pieces of the puzzle are there. Minus one. All the pieces are right there. You, you can see the cabin in the woods that you were building the puzzle for. You can see everything except that one piece in the middle that brings it all together. And that in this case would be a body or any kind of DNA or eyewitness testimony or even a confession. But cases like this are always frustrating as well because it is, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's like, girl, how could you not know? How could you not see that you were being played? But at the same time, I don't want to victim blame her, right? Like I might have my frustrations with it, but I don't want to blame her because obviously she's still the victim. You know, I mean, it's like when someone's in love, man, there's like no stopping. It's an addiction. It's very much an addiction. And like I said before, when you're coming off of a, of maybe a, a, I don't know, I don't know if it was a bad marriage. It definitely was a failed marriage. You're a single mom. You're trying to get back out there. You're 29. You know, you got a seven year old that you love, but you, you, you work a lot to provide for her. You know, it's like, you're going to, you're going to try to find love where it comes. And I get that. I completely understand. I sympathize. I empathize. But the way I look at it is like, I don't know, man. Like, I think maybe I've just read enough of this shit where I just look at it now and I go like, ah, you know, if, uh, if any one of my friends is in one of those kind of situations, I'd be like, you know, maybe just kind of like pump the brakes a little bit because anyone who's in a relationship and starts to cheat on their spouse or significant other without just ending things or, or becoming legally separated, I, I think is, is a red flag. Because if things have gotten so bad with that person that they're with, that they're willing to step out, then who's to say that they're not going to do the same thing to you? And when there's nearly $100,000 that were given over, I don't know how long the period of time was, I'm not assuming it was long, you know, it, you can kind of see exactly where this guy found himself. And so whatever that last missing puzzle piece is, I think is going to be precisely what brings this thing together. Do I think we're ever going to find a body? No. I think if it's been 20 years, she's been concealed well enough. You know, I mean, maybe she's buried on some other property uh, along the way to and from, you know, work to the Burger King. I, I probably would have brought like cadaver dogs or a, a scent sniffing dog, gotten her scent and tried to track it. This has actually happened before. I've seen this in, in other reports where someone was kidnapped and they used um, a basset hound to follow the scent along even the freeway. They were able to follow the scent. You know, so it's like some of those dogs can do pretty well. You got to act quick though, but it's been over a week. That's something that's a little bit harder to do. So we just have to wait to see what happens with the story of Patty Adkins. It's very sad. It's very tragic. I feel for her daughter who's now in her late 20s, roughly the same age her mom was when she disappeared. And that's got to be really weighing on her. And I hope for her sake and the rest of the family that one day justice is found. And one day justice gets brought down on, on those, those person or persons who clearly committed a crime. Because I don't buy the whole angle of her running off and, you know, changing her identity and leaving everything behind to go to Canada. Canada is a wonderful place. Don't get me wrong, but no, that theory doesn't fly. However, I am curious to know your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, if you want, let me know comment section on YouTube, find me on Instagram. Let me know your thoughts. Find me on TikTok. Let me know your thoughts. I will talk to you guys next week for another episode of deep lore. Thank you again. I hope you enjoyed the format change. Hope you understand why there's a format change and I hope to see you guys for future episodes. Thank you again. Have yourself a great week and peace out.